Well, let's talk about the book of Revelation. We're in this series at Stillwater's Church called The Lamb, The Lion, and The Warrior King, and we're going through the book of Revelation. And what I'm doing is I'm supplementing the Sunday morning sermons uh, with some explanations about the book of Revelation. And a lot of people have questions about that. So today I'm going to talk about explaining the beast in the book of Revelation. Let me just uh, read to you from Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 8, where it talks about two different beasts that come up out of the sea and out of the earth. Now, it's important to note that in the Old Testament, the imagery of evil, of anti-God, uh, anti-religious um, uh, state was often described as a beast. Okay, so um, in Revelation 13, we're going to see that there are, are these two different beasts that are described. And so just think about this, that they were hostile toward God. Okay, so that's what this represents. Verse 1, And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads. And with ten diadems, or crowns, uh, on its horns, and blasphemous names on its heads. And the beast that I saw was like a leopard. Its feet were like a bear's, and its mouth was like a lion's mouth. And to it the dragon gave his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads seemed to have a mortal wound, but its mortal wound was healed, and the whole earth marveled as they followed the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, for he had given his authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who can fight against it? And the beast was given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words. And it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months three and a half years. And it opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. And also, it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them. And the authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation, and all who dwell on earth will worship it and everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. So let, let's talk about uh, this beast. The first beast emerges from the sea, which the Jewish tradition believed that that the, the sea represented evil. So in other words, they weren't. They didn't suggest that the sea itself was evil, but in imagery. Uh, the sea represented an evil place or a source of evil. And so uh, this beast that comes up out of the sea seems to correspond with the book of Daniel. Now, in the book of Daniel, there is a prophecy uh, about a beast and about several beasts, actually. And um, so you'll see that this is... Um, something that corresponds with that, and, and we'll find out a little bit about what that means. Uh, in Daniel chapter 7, the beast has crowns and horns, uh, which stands for power and sovereignty, and it illustrates the defiance of God and the anti-God state. So when you see these crowns and these horns, it represents its power, represents its sovereignty, uh, the fact that it rules. And uh, so these prophecies from the book of Daniel help us understand Revelation chapter 13. Let me just kind of talk about that for a second. In Daniel's visions, he saw a large statue, four beasts, and a ram and a goat, okay, in his visions. Uh, the Babylonian Empire was represented by the head of the gold statue and um, the lion and the ram. So in other words, that was representative of Babylon, which often in the Bible is compared to uh, evil government, uh, the the empire, if you will, the reign, the realm of the devil, uh, it represents evil. It represents the anti-God, anti-Christ state. So now the Medo-Persian empire was represented by the chest and the arms of silver 
if you remember that 90 foot tall statue. Um, and uh, the um, uh, it represents uh, the bear and the goat and with one horn. <clears throat> so that was the Medo-Persian Empire. The Greek Empire was represented by the bronze belly, the leopard and the goat with four horns. So in these cum accumulated visions, this represented uh, the Greek Empire. And then the Roman Empire is represented in the, the statue that we see by the legs of iron and the feet of clay and uh, the strong beast and the goat with the little horn. And this beast represents the Antichrist governments of the world. Okay, so in Revelation 13, the beast from the sea represents Antichrist governments. Uh, it represents evil. It represents um, uh, what God is going to end up judging. And so uh, it's important that we note that what is uh, being judged here and what is, is being represented here is this anti-God government, the, the evil state uh, in the world. Now, the beast from the earth, let's read from Revelation 13, verse 11, and then 16, 17, and 18. And then I saw another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, but spoke like a dragon. All right, so uh, looked like a lamb with horns, uh, but he spoke like a dragon. And he forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his hand or on his forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is man's number, and his number is 666. Now, in past recordings, I've talked about what does 666 mean. And of course, that represents the number of man, uh, of man's failure. It represents sin. And uh, so we can say that this beast from the earth uh, the second beast, the one from the earth, normally represents religious authority. So this is false religion. This is anti-Christ, anti-God um, religion that would say that you get to God through your works. You get to God through your deeds. You get to God through um, something that you do. And so this is all the false religion uh, of the world. And the background of this vision uh in, in this context, was the practice of emperor worship. So, in other words, some of this uh, was reflected from what was going on in the Roman Empire at the time when John the Apostle wrote this. And they worshiped the Caesar as a divine being. And so this beast from the earth could cause all who refused to worship to be killed. And so this is an allusion to that. So here we have the two beasts in the book of Revelation. We have the one from the sea, representing evil government, representing evil. And we have, of course, the one from the earth, uh, representing false religion, anti-Christ, anti-God sentiment. Um, and so uh, these are what uh, the two beasts are in the book of Revelation. Well, thank you for watching today. I hope you'll share this video. Let somebody know that you watched it and uh, encourage them to watch it as well. God bless you, and we'll see you this Sunday.